you doing tonight? Um, I have arithmet arithmetic sequences. Okay, arithmetic sequences. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about them. What uh, What's the problem that they're giving you? Give me a problem. Okay, so they just listed off a few numbers. Okay. 7, 12, 17. I'm sorry, what were the numbers again? Uh, it was 7, 12, 17, 22, and then 27. Okay. Now, when you're dealing with arithmetic sequences, there is a general formula for the nth term. Okay. That's the first term, that's the second term, that's the third term, that's the fourth term, that's the fifth term. If I want to know what the nth term is, like what would the 140th term be, then I'm going to use this explicit formula. which is the first number in the sequence plus the common difference times n minus 1. Okay. Now, this is something you're going to have to memorize. And if I've been away from it for a while, uh, since last year, and uh, so let's check and see if this is correct. Okay. What would the third term of this particular sequence be according to this formula? Um, it would be... It's the first term. Give it to me piece by piece. Um, so it'd be A sub... Or a. a sub 1, which is the first term. Okay, yeah. That's so seven. seven. What's the common difference? Uh, five. And then... N minus is, one, N is three. Two. Is that the proper answer? For yes. the third term? It yes, is. it is. And so what that tells us is that's the proper formula. Okay. Okay. In other words, you can always check the formulas by just checking a couple of early terms in the sequence. Okay, cool. Okay. So this is the general formula. The specific formula is going to be this. For this particular sequence, where n can be any number you want. In other words, if I want the 40th term in that sequence, then it's 7 plus 5 times 39. Right. And that'd be a lot faster way of getting it than going 32, 37, 40 times. Yeah. All right. So what did they specifically want you to do with this sequence? Um, it says decide whether the statement or the sequence is, arith is arithmetic and then explain why or why not. Okay. Uh, have they taught you geometric sequences yet? Uh, maybe. Usually they only teach you. There's all kinds of different sequences um, and series. But uh, the first two they generally teach you is arithmetic and the next one is geometric. And geometric is where every term is multiplied by a common term. This is a geometric sequence because every term is twice the previous term. Okay. These have different formulas. But let's not get into geometric sequences until you give me a problem that's a geometric sequence or uh, 
whatever. But because if they so far have only taught you arithmetic sequences, and let's stick to arithmetic sequences. Okay. Uh, is this one? And the answer is yes. And the reason is there is a common difference. If you subtract every term, you get five, 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 five. Any two terms subtract to five. So okay. when you have a common difference that never changes, make that a 23 and it's not an arithmetic sequence anymore. Okay. But as long as every, every number in the sequence is separated by the same amount, it's an arithmetic sequence. Okay. Okay. They ask you anything else about this particular sequence? Uh, I got that. That makes sense now. Okay. And actually, that can be reduced a little bit. Sometimes you might say that it's this. And then that five, it's actually this. So if you wanted the specific formula for this particular sequence, you can always use that to get it. So okay. It's a, bit, it's a little bit more simplified than that. It will give you the same number. It would give us the same 40th term, just a little faster. All right. Sweet. Okay. What else you got? Um, all right. So... This one says write a rule for the nth term in the arithmetic sequence. Okay. Um, so it's d equals 5 and then comma a sub 1 equals negative 9. Okay. So what's the general rule? Give it to me. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is only for arithmetic sequences. Geometric sequences have a different general formula. Okay, so it's a sub 1 plus the common difference would be 5. And then parentheses n minus 1. And they've told us a sub 1, so we'll go ahead and fill in that also. Uh, minus 9. Okay. Uh, now, they generally want you to simplify that. Right. So go ahead and do it. Okay, so a sub n minus 4 parentheses n minus 1. Hold on, let's do it step at a time so we don't make any mistakes. Minus 9. Oh, we have to distribute the 5. Right. Plus 5 n. Oh. Minus 5, which becomes 5n minus 14. That's the answer they want. Okay. Okay. And um, just to check, what should the first term be? Um, the first term... We know what it is, but is that correct? If we plug in minus 9 for term number 1, does this give you minus 9 when you put a, a, a 1 in for n? Because that's what we're talking about. n is 1. So okay. a sub 1 is going to be 5 times 1 minus 14, which is minus 9. So yes, a sub 1 is equal to minus 9. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure this is the answer they'd be looking for, or that's what would be on uh, a multiple choice test. This is just as correct, it's just not simplified. Okay. Okay. And if they wanted the, yeah, this is the specific for that particular series. Okay. What else? All right. Um, 
Okay, so let's see. All right, here we go. A sub 4 equals 18. And then A sub 10 equals 48. A sub 10? Yeah. Okay. All right, now they're getting a little tougher on you. And they want to know what? The formula for this series? Uh, yeah, so it's the same one. So write a rule for the nth term. Okay. So let's start with the generic. Give me the generic. Uh, a sub n equals a, one, a sub 1 plus d and then n minus 1. Now, notice that we don't know what a sub 1 or d is. Right. So, we'll use this information. So, a sub 4 equals 18 equals a sub 1 plus d times what? Um, n minus 1. Well, what's n? Oh, it's four. So, so three. It's n minus one, so it's three. Okay. Now let's do another equation. A sub 10, which they've told us is equal to 48. What's that equal to? Uh, A sub one plus D equals mm -hmm. nine. nine. Exactly. So, now we can solve, let's erase that, we don't need that. What we have here is two equations and two variables. Ooh. Oh, do we subtract? Um, well, how would you solve this? I mean, here, let me write it a little bit more conventionally. Yes, subtraction would be a good idea. I'm going to put it in general format, or rather standard format. Now, how am I going to solve that? Um... You said it. What are you going to do? Subtract. I'm going to subtract the second equation from the first equation. That's going to get rid of a sub 1. What am I okay. left with? Um, negative 6. No, wait, is it? Or is it 6d? Well, I tell you what. Let's make this problem a little easier and subtract the first one from the second one. In other words, do... Equation 2 minus equation 1. And then what do you get? You get 6. Well, you get 6D. Yeah, 6D. Equals 30. So D equals 5. Once you know what D equals, what's A equal? Um. In other words, you got to solve for both variables. Plug in 5 for D into equation 1 and solve it for A sub 1. Okay. So you get A sub 1 plus 15 equals 18. A sub 1 equals 3. Oh, okay. So now what's the answer? At least the first part of the answer. Um. They want this. Okay, so a sub n equals uh, 3 plus 5, and then n minus 1. Yeah, and that is an answer. It's just not simplified, so let's simplify it. Okay, a sub n equals 8, n minus 1. No, don't do it in one step. You make mistakes when you do it in one step. Do it in two steps. 3 plus what? 3 plus, oh, right, 5n minus 5. Now what's that equal to? 
You'd hate to be able to know how to do this problem and get it wrong because of that mistake. Right. Um, is it a sub n five equals five n minus two? Yeah. If you want to put the variable first, that's what I would do. And now you can figure out any term. Let's just check it. Is the fourth term 18? According to this formula, um, yes. Is the tenth term forty-eight? Yes. And notice how easy it is to figure it out once you have it simplified down to this final formula over here. Yeah. Much easier than if you use this as the answer. Okay. Sweet. Okay. So, when they give you two terms in the sequence, tell yourself this is a system of equations that I'm going to have to solve. All right. Because that's the only way I know how to do them. When they don't give you a sub 1, and they don't give you d, and they don't give you the sequence, or the series, rather, then you have to set up two equations. All right, okay. what else you got? All right, uh, d equals negative 3. And then a sub 8 equals 5. Okay. So give me the general. Always start with the general. Okay, a sub so n. You'll see how to do the problem the moment you see the general. Okay. And then a sub 1. Minus 3. Hold on. Let's just do this. All right. I got no problems with it now. Um, Let me just write it. <laughs> minus 3 times n minus 1. A sub 1. Okay, what do we know? What next? In other words, we know this much of it. Right. Um, so we need to find a sub 1. Well, rather than even look at it like that, let's take this piece of information that we haven't used yet and fill it in. Okay. A sub 8 is equal to what? 5. Which is equal to? Um, Fill in everything you know there. Negative 3. Uh-uh. Starts with A sub 1. A sub 1 minus 3 and minus 1. You know what N is. What's N? Eight, so seven. Now notice what you can solve for. A sub one. Go ahead and solve uh, for it. This time it's just a single equation. Um, is it negative 21 over five? Okay, when you are solving for a variable in an equation, you want to get rid of everything that is with that variable. So I got to get rid of that 21. Oh, okay. So How do I get rid of it? You I divide don't divide. it. I don't divide. You're going to always do the opposite of what it's doing right now. Right now it is being subtracted from A. You add it. So you got to add it. If it was a multiplier of A, if it was A times 21, then you would divide. Right. Always remember you're doing the inverse, the opposite of whatever it is. So we got to add 21, add 21, and you get A sub 1 equals 26. Now give me the formula. Okay, so it's... Um, 
Ace, oh no, wait, is it 26? Uh-huh. We just solved for Ace of 1, and it was 26. 26 plus Minus. negative Minus three. <coughs> well, let's go ahead and distribute that. What's the last thing here? Minus three. No. Or, it's minus yeah. three times minus one. And it's positive three, so plus three. Now what's the final answer? Um, is it negative three N plus 29? Okay, yeah, it doesn't matter what order you put it in. Or 29 minus 3n, either one. <clears throat> there, There is something to maybe be said for consistency. In other words, always put your n term first. Okay. Uh, I, that, that's just me. Uh, rather than sometimes putting it like this and sometimes putting it those are both the same, but if you're always going to be giving an answer, I kind of like the consistency of putting the end term first. Right. But notice that that's exactly how we're going to solve every problem. They're going to give you two pieces of information. On the last one, they gave you a sub 4 and a sub 10. On this one, they're giving you d and a sub 8. You still haven't given us a sub 1 in either one. So that's going to be something we have to solve for. Go okay. With a, another one? Sure. Let's see. Um, it does look like all of these are arithmetic. So yeah. um, geometric, totally different general formula. You do all the problems pretty much the same way, but... It's just a general formula that you have to memorize. It's slightly different. Okay. Um, A sub 7 equals negative 22. And A sub 11 equals negative 34. You tell me how to do everything else. Okay. So, what do I start with? A sub n equals A sub 1 plus D times n minus 1. Good. Now, let's come up with we pretty sure we're going to need two equations here, right? Because we know what a sub 7 is, and we know what a sub 11 is. So right. if I come up with two equations and two variables, and those two variables are going to be a sub 1 and d, I'll be able to solve it. So give me one equation. Um, let's see. Start with that right there. Uh, a sub 7 Let's go ahead and leave that as a sub 7 and give me the right side of that equation okay um, would it be a sub 1 plus d Times six. I mean the second equation. Okay, a sub eleven equals a sub one plus d times ten. Okay, now I'm going to take a sub seven and I'm going to substitute minus twenty two for it. I'm going okay. to take a sub 11 and substitute minus 34 for it. And then over here on the left in blue, I'm going to write these as you would more typically see them. And I'm going to write this one first. So I have a sub 1 
plus 10D equals negative 34. With me? Yeah. Give me the second one. All right, it's A sub 1 plus 6D equals negative 22. Okay, now how are you going to solve that set of simultaneous equations? So you subtract them so that a ones, a sub ones cancel out. Okay. And then you get four d equals negative. Er, I'm gonna put in my calculator just to make sure. If, if you're not a hundred percent sure, definitely use your calculator. This is two digits, both negative numbers. I got no problem with you using a calculator. As long as you know how to do this on a calculator. What kind of calculator do you have, Jake? Uh, TI-84. Okay. It's got two keys on it. One is a subtraction sign. The other is a negative sign. Therein lies the key in doing it. Yep. Okay. I got negative 56. So you didn't do it right. Okay. Here's the subtraction key. There's the negative key, correct? Yes. Okay. So you want negative 34, subtraction key, negative 22. That's the way you have to do it in that calculator. Go ahead and do that and tell me what you get. Negative 12. That's the correct answer. Now notice okay. that if I just do it manually, I change all subtraction problems to addition problems by doing that. Now I have negative 34 plus 22 is negative 12. So I know negative 12 is the correct answer. But if you're going to depend on that calculator for those kind of problems, make sure you understand the differences between those two dash keys on that calculator. And they are significant. It is significantly different than using a standard four-function calculator. Do you know what I mean by a four-function calculator? Yeah. Four-function calculator just has one dash on it, the subtraction key. It doesn't have a negative sign key. So subtraction problems are actually done a little different on four-function calculators. So make sure that you know how your calculator subtracts positive and negative numbers. Okay. And you'd hate to make that mistake, especially when you're using a calculator. You know, yeah. you're supposed to get those wrong. Right. D is minus 3. Now, how do we figure out A, sub 1? Oh, uh, we plug in D. Okay. Which equation? Um, we can do either one, right? We can. Actually, it's a little easier to do that one because D is being multiplied by 10. You can do that in your head. Right. So it'd be A sub 1 plus um, plus negative 30 equals negative 34. What's a sub 1 equal to? a sub 1 equals negative 4? Yep. So now what's the answer? Well, not the answer, the first part of the answer. Um, a sub n equals a sub 1. Well, we know what that is, so fill in the a sub 1. Okay, so it's negative 4 um, minus 3. Yeah, I would almost recommend, just so you don't make mistakes, the key in math and to not making mistakes is to do stuff one step at a time and definitely just plug stuff in. Don't do the calculations in your head. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is plug in minus 4 for a sub 1. And then I got some plus. D is minus 3. 
times n minus 1. And now I can get rid of that plus sign because now I see that I didn't need it. But okay. I'm not done. So what's next? Uh, you sub, um, distribute the negative 3. Okay, so it's minus 4. Keep going. Uh, minus 3n plus 3. And the final answer? Um, negative 3n minus 1. Good. Again, the process is exactly the same, and it always starts there. Okay. As long as you always start there, then it's just a question of plugging the stuff, the, the two pieces of information they give you in. Sometimes you have a single equation you have to solve. Sometimes you have two equations you have to solve. Okay. And then you always end up with a sub n being equal to some number times n plus or minus some other number. Right. By the time you've simplified it all down. All right, Jake, I will let you go unless you have any final questions. Uh, no, I'm all set. Okay, and we're good to go at 6 uh, every Monday? Yep. Sounds good. Talk to you next Monday. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.